All right, here we go again. Hi there. Welcome again to my kitchen, folks. Um, I apologize again for the uh, live video being delayed from last night. You can hear my voice is, well, it's doing better. That's the best I could say. It's, it's a lot better than it was yesterday, and I'm feeling okay. I'm hoping next Wednesday we'll actually have a live video on schedule because we've got <clears throat> so far three, you know, this is the second week of the new year. And uh, last year it was delayed half an hour. Now it has been delayed a day. But all we can do is work on it. However, right now, let's get started on a couple of things. And then I will do all the usual introductions. And that would be, got two things going here. <clears throat> One is we have to start preparing the pasta. Mm. Yeah, because this is actually a pretty easy dish to the point where if I had prepared the spaghetti and everything all in advance, this whole thing might be done in like 30 minutes. And and I do want to try to extend it a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start with, actually, let's move this over. There we go. Let's start with the pasta. And we've got our good old boiling water, of course. Oh well. And we just got to do all this. Yeah, I know. It's I mean, obviously this is much longer than you would think for a um Wagner Magnolite uh Dutch oven. Um but don't worry because you see uh I'm deliberately not breaking the spaghetti in half. I'd rather what you just do is have a little bit of patience and it will bend so that little by little, we will manage to get all of this into the water. Little by little. There we go. Notice it is shrinking down. In fact, let's do a bit of a close up, shall we? All right. Gotta be careful not to splash it on myself. But eventually I will get all of this submerged, not to worry. <laughs> I have a nice big aluminum stock pot that I really meant to use, especially for a long pasta like this. And so far, well, it's gotten, it's been used a couple of times, but a lot of times I just like uh, making spaghetti like this because it works. There we go. We're almost there. A little bit here, a little bit. Oh, gotta be careful! I'm still splashing. A little bit there, and all right. There we go. And with that, the pasta is pretty much submerged. So let's just keep on. Let's keep. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. However, here's the part where I can actually cover it for about a minute or so. Which is good because I've got something else to uh, attend to as well. Where did I just put that cover? Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Now for step two. Here's where we take a look at good old uh, lightning. This is my... Number seven, handwritten BSR skillet. And what I'm doing with him is he gets the bacon. There we go. Because, yeah, I know this recipe doesn't call for bacon. But I'm going to mix it in with the spaghetti. You know, add some additional flavor to it. There we go. Anyway. Hi there, folks, and welcome once again to my kitchen. Thank you very much for uh, taking your time to uh, come here on a Thursday evening. I've already, uh, I know I already did my apologies for that, so I'm just glad everybody's just kind enough to show up, uh, especially all of the uh, usual names that you see here, like South Black Cat Rules, and Hello, and Corey Clark, and Rocket Caber. Jerry, 1952, hello, and hello, Beth Button. You can never go wrong with bacon. Well, almost never. 
I've seen bacon flavored ice cream and I haven't yet tried it, but who knows? Anyway, all I gotta do is get this bacon here nice and crisp. And I gotta be careful with that pasta as well. It's probably not gonna take long before it starts to boil over. Hello, Kimberly Miller, and hello, uh, Terry Sinchap. Yes, nice to be here, and thank you very much for showing up. But anyway, as the uh, title of this video says, we are doing spaghetti pizza, <clears throat> which is uh, pretty much a silly dish. It's the type of thing that kids really love because it's got spaghetti and pizza. And I suppose it's the type of thing that drives traditional Italians crazy. Because, you know, I mean, why are you doing taking your taking your spaghetti and cooking it like a pizza? So, eh, the important thing is uh, is it uh, tastes good. Or I'm certain it will taste good. This is actually my first time making it. Mmm, I can smell the bacon, though, that's for sure. <clears throat> and once the bacon is nice and crisp and the uh, pasta is ready... Then I will be able to, let's try to raise this a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a good view here. Then we will be able to move on to the next step. Okay, well, it didn't actually uh, boil over. Well, I, I like that. That's a good sign, I think. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. Um, the thing, what basically, since this spaghetti is going to be the base for the pizza, uh, I'm going to cook it until al dente and then drain it out and let it dry out, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> then once, then once we've done that, I'll be able to, uh, mix in the, um, well, the other ingredients such as the cheese and the eggs all to, uh, make sure it's uh, nice and solid. And then from there, it'll go on to a cast iron pan. Uh, I don't know yet what cast iron pan I'm using for to uh, bake this pizza because uh, it depends on how much volume uh, this uh, spaghetti ends up take, taking. I don't know if it's going to go into a 10-inch, although if, since this is a 10-inch, it looks like I'm probably going to be able to put it into a 12-inch because, you know, we don't need a very thick, um, very thick crust on our pizza. And good old lightning here, as I know I've said before. Hey, let me dig out this handle cover. Good old lightning here. I gave him the name of lightning for two reasons. One of which is he certainly does seem to cook food lightning fast. Um, and I don't know why he seems to have uh, work even better than um, most of my other cast iron at this. But that's what the that's the impression that I get. Maybe because of the size, you know, the heat is all uh, condensed into this smaller area. And, of course, as I've mentioned before, and I'll show you after the bacon has been taken out of the pan, uh, Lightning here also has several uh, interesting designs on the bottom from sand shift that look like cracks, but they're not. Or they might even, you might even say they look like bolts of lightning. Hence the name Lightning. There we go. Yeah, you can see this pasta is definitely softening up now. So this is not going to take long at all. Anyway. Hello and good evening, grumpy old gringo and everyone. I'm doing, well, as I said, I'm doing much better. You know, this morning I woke up like feeling like crap again. Then I took some pills and I felt much better. Yay. Which meant I was able to go to work. Oh, boy. But it also means I'm doing <clears throat> well enough to be able to do some cooking tonight. So I'm happy about that. Uh, and 45 below, like Minnesota. Ouch. Well, I know you get this every winter, but it's still, I know, it's still nothing to sneeze about. <laughs> now, as this, yeah, thank you very much, Marilyn. And yes, I'm, I am doing better. Are the noodles going to be the crust? Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to mix in some eggs and cheese all into the pasta to make them solid enough to form a base to uh, lay the pizza sauce on. And it's really as simple as that. Then we're just going to top it just like any other pizza. I've got your, 
I've got uh, mozzarella, um, grated Romano and Parmesan, and pepperoni. Nice and simple. I've never really been a fan of pizza with 2,000 toppings on it. I've had pizza with 2,000 toppings on it, and yes, it's good, but yeah, I'm more of a simple person, I guess. And besides, I actually like the taste of the pizza itself. I like a good tasting crust, and I like a good tasting sweet sauce. And to answer somebody's question from the chat tonight, uh, yes, pineapples do belong on pizza, including spaghetti pizza. If I had some tonight, which I didn't think of, I would have put it in this pizza. <laughs> uh, I am, um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the pineapples on pizza thing is one of those silly little non-arguments that are really there more to troll people than anything else. <clears throat> because it's not traditional, that's why they say, that's why people say pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. But so what? This is America, where we take foreign dishes and pretty much ruin them, no matter what country you're from. I mean, in, I mean, we've ruined Italian pizza, we've ruined Chinese food, we've ruined Mexican food. You name it, we've ruined it. I guess that's why they often say the most popular uh, American food there is, is is the hot dog, where, you know, we took sausages and ruined it and, and invented the hot dog. And I'm very much proud to be part of that legacy. <laughs> <clears throat> well, again, I am I'm I am getting better, like it or not. So <laughs> I love hot ham and pineapple on pizza. So do I as well. <laughs> pineapple on pizza, that's a salad. Yeah, I've had salad on pizza. I've had veggie pizzas too. So and they do actually have salad pizzas for that matter. Now, we haven't ruined it, we've improved it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We are cast iron artists. Well, in a way, we are. This is art. I mean, there's, I mean, really, cooking is a science. Cooking is an art. Yet both of them are true. Science and art definitely mix when it comes to cooking. And, and this is almost done. This, this bacon is definitely getting close to done. I should probably test this uh, pasta. Mm. The pasta is still pretty solid, unfortunately. And you know what? I think I even forgot to add salt. My bad. Gonna turn this water up. Add some salt to the pasta before it's too late. <sighs> Knew I forgot something. <laughs> well, I guess that's just because, again, I'm not fully recovered yet. That's all right. It'll mix in. But even so, even without the salt, this, pot, this pasta is still pretty solid and, and definitely has it at least a few minutes to go yet. There we go. It'll mix in. I'm not worried about it. All right, getting on with this. This is Danny and Christy and Jessica. Hello, Arnold Palmer. Well, thank you very much. And only use cast iron skill X or a Dutch oven. Well, hello, and thank you very much for joining Arnold Palmer and Danny and Christy and Jessica. Nice to see you here. Welcome to this little uh, this little din of insanity, I guess you could say. Okay, yeah, this, this uh, bacon is definitely at the point where I think it's done here. I mean, if we take a look here. That means we can, yeah, I really like this leather handle cover. I mean, that was part of the field skillet, and definitely I'm getting a lot of use out of it, so I'm, I'm quite happy about that. For that matter, if we've got, uh, I think I'm going to get a second dish to drain the grease. Excuse me one second. Ugh. Yeah, that's the other thing about this channel. That's why they call it Cast Iron Chaos. Unexpected things tend to happen. All right. Let's see if I can do this right. Yeah, yeah, right. Anyway. There we go. 
Yeah, actually, so far so good. Oops. Let's get some of this. Move the bacon to the side. That over here. There we go. And I did it. I actually managed to drain the grease. All right. So that's the first step. The bacon. The next step, we'll go back to the pasta again. And the pasta is now bubbling very nicely. So probably because of it, I added the salt, which I should have done at the beginning. However, now that we've done that, let's test it now and see if there has been any kind of a change. Also, I am, ooh, hot. Mm. 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 Much better. Mm. It's softening maybe about another minute. But um, I am not a fan of the, th the ways of testing pasta that say things like throw it against the wall, and if it sticks, it's done. Um, I mean, it's a waste of pasta, and you have to clean up the wall. <laughs> I am much rather a fan of taste testing because, you know, you get to eat it. <laughs> anyway, also here again is a nice example of pasta cooked in a uh, regular sized Dutch oven. And as you can see, there really wasn't any difficulty at, with that at all. No anchovies. <laughs> and thank you very much, Strong's Adventures. Salt lowers the boiling point. There's, that's another good point, too. All of which, yes, I did read that. I just don't I just don't have it memorized, I'm afraid, which again demonstrates that I'm not a professional. Most importantly, it also adds flavor. And once this is done, we will be able to move on to the next step, which I suspect is not going to take long at all. Let's try testing it again. Besides, we're going to be thickening this pasta anyway, so probably would be just fine. Come on. Here we go. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think we're at that point. So that's good. That means we can indeed move on to the next step. Turn off the heat. Here, head over to the sink. There we go. That's pretty good. Sorry for the roller coaster as usual. And where did my pot holders go? Here they are. That's why they call them pot holders, of course. <laughs> All right. Now, as I said, there we go. Away we go. Plop. Okay, and then from here, back into the pot, which is still hot. I mean, it's not cast iron. It's going to uh, cool down rather quickly, but it should help to dry out the pasta, which is what I'm uh, kind of aiming for. And there we go. So that takes care of that step. So now we'll move over here. And this should be the last time I hope that I do this little roller coaster ride thing. So sorry about that. <clears throat> need a steam blower. Steam burns are a real thing. Yes, they are. I know that all too well. I've had small ones. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a pound of pasta. Um, based on that, I would not be surprised if I can actually fit it into the 12-inch Dutch oven. So I'm actually looking forward to that. However, now that we've done that, I think we can actually start preparing our mix to go with the pasta. So, this part is going to be very easy as well. 
This is really no more than I'm using three eggs in this case. One. Oh, why my yolks always split like that? Two. And three. And that takes care of this batch of eggs. Fortunately, I got more eggs just yesterday. Oh, come on. Don't tell me it's going to be the... Yeah, I knew, I knew it. It's the, always the last one that's the problem. Okay, there we go. There we go. Well, despite all that, we accomplished what we set out to do here. So now I've got to put this away and then wash my hands quickly. All right. And to this, we just throw in a few extra things. Namely, some salt, not too much. Papa. Probably a little garlic powder wouldn't hurt. We make it kind of like a focaccia spaghetti. And then, of course, some cheese, namely mozzarella. This is about, okay, this is a pound, sorry. We need to do like maybe about half a cup or so of mozzarella. That's probably enough. And to this, uh, also just for the heck of it, I'm going to throw in a little bit of sour cream because I have a um, because I have a little bit left here, and I would rather use it. Finally, oh, that didn't. That's not all of it. There we go, that's better. Finally. Um, not done yet. A little bit of um, Parmesan Romano. There we go. There we go. That should, oh, that's more than enough. <laughs> um, basil, just a little bit. Because basil is quite strong. And oregano. And then after that, if, if need be, we'll just need to simply uh, over here. Okay. If need be, we will add, throw in a little bit of extra milk. Oh, well, this looks like it has a nice consistency already. That wasn't so hard. And only just at this moment, I realize I've actually wasted a bowl because my intention was to mix it all together in this bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm still a little bit out of it tonight, I can see. Oh, well. Move this over. Excuse me. There you go. Let's move this over here. And now on top of everything else, I've got to dig out my spatula so I can be sure to get every bit of this you know, rubber spatula, that is. All right. Finally, to this rather disgusting looking little mixture, time for the pasta. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
There we go. Well, it's certainly dried out. I'll say that much. But not too much, fortunately. Looks like we've got just about all of it. Come on, you. This is the part where if you make it with your kids, your kids will probably burst out laughing, which is fine. Laughing kids are a nice thing. <sighs> now, let's try mixing all of this up. My hope is that this mixture here will prevent the eggs from scrambling. There we go. And lest we forget, on top of everything else, you know, boy, we could probably eat this as it is right now. Although the eggs are technically still raw, although you might say the spaghetti might actually be cooking the eggs. I'll bet if we threw in some pasta water, we could indeed have something of the carbonara here. Because this smells pretty good. Finally. Where did it go? Here it is, finally, the bacon. Uh, beef on weck. I'm going to have to work on that. You know, you know, I'll make an appointment for that, maybe next week. Whoops, there goes a little piece of bacon. Uh, uh, oh, you didn't see that, and I'm not worried about it at all. Okay, we're expecting a mixture of storms and ice. We didn't drive. We don't drive on ice here. No, neither do I. Uh, I am at the point where, if we have storms that bad, I stay home, and thank goodness I can actually work remotely too. So, so no more drive. No more commuting to work in the middle of a blizzard. I, I did that once or twice, and it was not fun. I remember all too well the time when I was driving down in the middle of a blizzard, driving down the highway. I probably wasn't doing more than 30, 35 in a 55-mile-an-hour zone. And yeah, there were a bunch of SUVs right behind me, all blinking their lights, telling me I was going too slow. I finally had to pull over carefully to let them pass. <laughs> then there was one guy who uh, just was simply too impatient with me, and he actually just plopped me, actually just went all to the side of me and rammed straight on into a snowbank. <sighs> so, okay, but there we go. There's the base for our pizza. Okay. Okay, now the thing is, is that I'd say this is probably going to be good for the 12-inch cast iron skillet, which means I need to get it out right away because I actually need to start heating it. So, let us head over here and bring out another BSR because I have so many of them and I love using them. All right, there we go. First of all, let's give another look again. As I mentioned, see, oh, this is already cooled up to the point to lightning. Ooh, maybe not that much. <laughs> I mean, I'm not burned, but it's still too hot to hold. So let's get this ha handle cover. Anyway, as I mentioned, come on. There we go. This, as I said before, is Lightning, my number seven BSR, complete with lightning marks, namely these sand ship parts here, the parts that look like cracks, but they are not cracks. 
Um, however, they do give the appearance of lightning bolts, and that's one reason why old lightning here has earned his name. Okay, <clears throat> this, on the other hand, which I have not yet heated, is a number 10 size Birmingham Stove and Range uh, skillet that I found um, in 2021, I believe. Yeah, just, at, just after the flea markets opened again with the, from the pandemic. Okay, so let's heat this up on a low to medium flame. I don't need to get this thing screaming hot. And once we do that, we will be able to lay this out. However, while I'm waiting there, <clears throat> I should do the next step. And that is prepare the pasta sauce. Oh, that's what this bowl was for. It was for the pasta sauce. Ugh. All right. You know what? I'll put it in anyway. What I'm referring to is this bowl. This was meant for the pasta sauce, not for, not for, this, not for this mix. But... I'll use it anyway because I doubt it's going to hurt. And I always prepare my own pizza sauce because it's very fast and very easy. <clears throat> so what do we have here now? We have... Peeled plum tomatoes. Plop. Get that all over the place. Glad, glad it didn't splash into the camera. I would not have liked that. And to that, we add all the usual. More salt. More pepper. Garlic powder. Some oregano. Little basil. And then, after all this, The immersion blender, because yeah, I mean these are obviously you know these are peeled tomatoes. I've got I've got to uh, blend it. So here is a good excuse to once again bring out what has turned out to be a very useful kitchen item. I'm not sure if this is an essential kitchen tool, but in this instance, I certainly do appreciate it. First thing I do is unplug this because this immersion blender has some very sharp blades on the inside, and I don't want there to be any chance I could end up cutting myself on this. Finally, into my pizza sauce, throw in a little bit more of the uh, Parmesan Romano. And voila. There we go. I like to think it's better than ragu pizza sauce. And that wasn't very expensive and didn't take long at all to do. Okay. So far, so good. The unknown, the unknown sounds warm. Hmm. I'll have to see about uh, what we're talking about with the unknown there. 
I've been dipping out, dipping and preparing all my all day by myself. It was hard, but I did it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you've had a uh, very successful day then. Went to Bocce Club Pizza. Okay, at this point, this pan has been heating up for a little while. So, <clears throat> now it's time to uh, do what they always do in Italy and break out the olive oil. Oh, damn it. What did I do now? Ugh. Uh, sorry. Uh, what the hell did I do? Ugh, my light is like, ugh, I'll deal with that later. Anyway, as I said, olive oil. I'll probably turn this up a little bit. There we go. This is what we want. And the oven, by the way, is pre preheated to 400 degrees. But there we go. Now let's see if it all fits. Hope I I hope I did not choose too big a pan. However, from the looks of it, I suspect we did not. So again, this is a pound of spaghetti and a 12-inch cast iron pan. Nice sizzle. I like that. Since this is going to be a pizza crust, I actually do want to press it, press it down. The idea is we're supposed to cook it like this for a few minutes to help harden this, harden the bottom. But yeah, in fact, from the looks of it, with this pound of pizza, I probably could have even used a bigger pan because it's still in there pretty deep. I'd say this crust is probably at least an inch thick. So note to self, maybe next time I might even uh, bring out old Stumpy and give it a try. Too late to do that now, but... Again, considering the BSR number 12 is about, number 10 rather, is about uh, 12 and a half inches across, slightly more in fact, no, very, very slightly less, I'm sorry, it's 12 and 7 sixteenths inches, but you could just call it 12 and a half inches. However, again, I'm pressing it down because we want the sauce to stay on top without being absorbed too much into the spaghetti. I mean, that's the whole point of the uh, of the mixture that we put in as well, the egg and cheese mixture, to harden it, solidify it. But still, this is looking pretty good. All right, I think I'll wait, pause for a moment. Let's take a look here. Crispy nudes, yes, indeed. This is the first time I've ever heard of spaghetti pizza. Yeah, this is one of those... I think this is one of those internet creations, you know, the, all of those weird viral videos that do all kinds of strange things. However, again, if you look at our friend Google, you'll see this has been done many times. Usually, folks use leftover spaghetti for this. Um, I, I didn't have any leftover spaghetti, and that's why I had to make, had to make some fresh. But none, that's also why I wanted to, to try drying it out before I put it in. But yeah, um, technically, you know, this is about as much of a pizza as you could say a tortilla pizza or a French bread pizza is. Basically, you lay up the base, you, you put pizza sauce on the top, along with your toppings, and you call it a pizza. So that is how this is a uh, spaghetti pizza. While you guys are in a snowstorm, I just went outside and there's a dust storm here. D pal pal. <laughs> and Mercy B washed all my clothes and most of my bedding. Ouch. Another new food adventure. Well, yeah, I, I've mentioned before, I love trying new things. Um, <clears throat> because once in a while, I come across something that just plain blows me away. I'm not sure if this is going to blow me away, but it's certain to be tasty. The last time I was blown away here on the, on the YouTube live trying something new, 
Maybe it was when I tried Chicago hot dogs last year. Was it last year? I think it was last year. Yeah, that blew me away. I mean, I did not expect to like it as much as I did. Oh, that and Syracuse salt potatoes. They definitely blew me away. All right. I think we are doing good here. Which means now all we have to do is lay on the sauce. <sighs> I hope the sauce isn't too watery. Definitely sounds like it is being it is um, sinking in. I guess that's inevitable. And anyway, that's not so bad either because it helps to flavor the pasta. But still, this isn't looking too bad. I'm thinking we don't need to leave a crust on the side. So I will throw more sauce on top. Because what kid ever said there's too much sauce on this, on my spaghetti? None that I know of. All right. Having done that, let us now start doing what we usually do with uh, pizza. Add the cheese. And yes, I'm using store-bought shredded cheese. I know, I know, it's a sin. But it's also very convenient. I mean, after all, I wasn't feeling well. I could have graded the, uh, created this myself, but I think we're doing just fine here. And a little more. And anyway, another advantage to preheating this pan is it'll help cook the spaghetti in the oven as well, because this is going to be going into a 400 degree oven and supposedly, we only need to do that for like maybe 10 to 15 minutes. There we go. That's probably more than enough cheese, I think. Which is finally the last step. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, this, we are only 40 minutes in after all of, these, all of this prep work. And frankly, if you just did something like, say used jarred sauce and, uh, you know, took as many shortcuts as possible, you could probably have this prep work all done in like 15 minutes or so. But I intentionally tried to lengthen it, especially for you folks here on this video. Peps, as they call it. Time to start throwing in our pepperonis. One for you, two for you. Um, oh, yeah, this is too thick. Uh, Thin it out one and another and another and maybe one for me. Nom nom nom. Nom 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 nom. And we just keep going. Just the other day, I saw a pizza that was completely covered in mozzarella and they called it dragon scale because not mozzarella pepperoni because the uh, pepperoni was um, laid out in a manner similar to chain mail and yeah I have to admit I found it tempting besides this is all going to shrink slightly in the oven even though it's only going to be there like about 10 to 15 minutes or so Okay, better hurry. I think I can turn this. Yeah, I can think I can turn this off. In fact, because I don't want this to burn on the bottom. But we are just about done here. So yeah, they talk about one hour pizza. I'd say this pizza is going to be done in less than an hour. Let me throw a few more here. 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 And here. All right. Maybe numb a little more of this. Nom, nom, nom. And then from there, let's get a shot of this, shall we? Okay. 
Now that we've done that, all that's left now, how hard is this, is to throw this into the oven. Okay. Carefully. Up and down. There we go. I hope I can get that thing out of the pan when it's done. Anyway, it's a 400 degree oven. <clears throat> can probably cook like about 15 minutes or so, I think, which means we will be done at nine. Nice. Hi. Okay. Having done, ooh, that's still hot. Uh, it's probably absorbed some heat from the oven. Having done that, let's bring this back so you can at least see some cast iron. Okay, uh, now that I've wasted this much time, Fuzzy does not like to cook. I raised three kids for 14 years by myself. When they left, I put my pots and pans away. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Fuzz Fork. Um, wouldn't this be great on a lamb mold? <laughs> yeah. Here. You need to cook some peas. Good night for them. On America's Test Kitchen, they use the the bag mozzarella, it's drier, which is probably the reason why we don't get good pull or I don't get good pull on mozzarella pull on my pizzas. I've used, but I've shredded my own mozzarella and I still don't get the greatest pull. I mean, I've seen those pizzas and I've had those pizzas where the mozzarella seems to pull about a mile long and I just haven't been able to do it yet. But we will work on it. Oh, no, Palmer, I was under the impression that you measured a skillet at the base, not the top, which is the right way. Well, especially on BSR pans from the uh, Century Series, um, the measurement of a skillet is generally measured on the top. So this is a, uh, this number seven is about maybe nine or nine and a half inches across. And that's what we judge it for. Likewise, a large 10 inch skillet or 10 and a quarter inch skillet is 10 and a quarter inches from edge to edge. The pour spout might be a little bit more, but it is edge to edge as far as the measurements go. Meanwhile, and you know, I only learned this recently. Um, the size number, while well, I've known for a while that the size number is based on the stove eye, namely that this number seven pan would fit into a wood burning stove with a number seven stove eye, but supposedly um it's supposed to match the measurement of the heat ring they say oh that this is this would be about uh seven inches across that can't be right this does not look like seven inches i am going to i'm going to have to look this up again as i said i only read about that recently that the size number supposedly matches the uh, diameter of the heat ring that does not seem right but nonetheless, that is, yeah. So when I talk about Stumpy, who is my number 14 size and 15 inches across cast iron skillet, I'm talking about 15 inches from one edge to the other. And Arnold Palmer, we recently purchased another skillet from Wegmans and it, and it said it was 12 inches. Well, again, that means it should be 12 inches from rim, from edge to edge. Uh, I wouldn't mind if you measured it at some point. You don't have to drop everything, but try measuring it that way and see what it turns out. You know, the Finex skillet, as I found out, the one that has an octagonal or octagonal shape, um, it is also measures 12 inches, but only from the edge of the, you know, the points of the uh, eight points on the octagon. Uh, the <clears throat> narrower points are as little as like maybe 11 or even 10 inches. So it only measures 10 inches on the bottom. Yes, the cooking surface is definitely small. It definitely has less diameter than top than the edge on the top because this is not a straight pan. The pan is in fact curved. I mean, you can see it, and the curve, how slight it may be is still enough to add some uh, measurement to it. So that this one, I would say, probably adds at least another um, 
inch or so to the uh, measurement of the pan. So yes, it is true that, like you said, your num your 12 inch skillet has only a 10 inch cooking surface. And going up, I was under the impression they wanted to exchange. Oh, uh, somebody. Okay, what was this about problems with with Lodge? Uh, war in Ukraine. I I used to always grate my own cheese and do everything from scratch. And you know, what? pre shredded cheese is great. It is a pain. Yes, I thought so. Gary Johnson. I bought a five piece wildlife set. The camp oven had a factory flaw in the rim. I emailed Lodge, and their reply was that they should return it to the store because it was damaged in shipping. Hmm. That seems a little surprising, quite frankly. And I might even want to get uh, contact Lodge and get a second opinion or provide photos and get a second opinion. Because many people, myself included, have had very good results when dealing with Lodge's customer service. And having said that, speaking of big pan, did anyone here bid on the A, B, and I pan on Goodwill? I haven't been keeping an eye on Goodwill. But uh, if there's one there on uh, Goodwill, well, best of luck to anybody who might want it. AB and I is, in fact, a foundry that is still in business, and it is indeed made in the USA. AB and I is a uh, primarily a company that makes uh, things like pipes, you know, and uh, gears and all kinds of parts like that for plumbing and uh, machines and and all that. That's what they've been all their lives. At some point, I'm thinking it was, was the 1980s probably, very briefly, they made cast iron skillets. They didn't make many, but they made some, and even a Dutch oven. And that's why you, those ABNI skillets, like the one on uh, Goodwill, are very rare. So, yeah, uh, as a collector's item, if you manage to snag one, well, I would say enjoy it. So. You can use it for 2024. It's all the same days and dates. Hmm, you know, I can smell that cooking in the oven. Let me see what we look. Okay. Let's take a look right now and see what it looks like in the oven, especially since I've been doing my best to try to clean off the glass on the oven. It had gotten pretty stained, unfortunately. There we go. That's a pretty good view. And that's looking pretty nice, too. Bubbling on the side. Looks like it's retaining its shape. So uh, things are looking pretty good. All right. As I said, nine o'clock, which means we ha still have about seven minutes to go. My next purchase is going to be a large enamel Dutch oven. I can't wait. Best of luck, Deep Hell Pal. What got you started on using cast iron? Oh, that's a story that I've told a number of times. Um, especially in December, which I consider to be my cast iron anniversary, because I posted it on Facebook the night that I first used the cast iron pan was like December 16th, 2010. And I used a cast iron skillet that had been sitting in the back in a cabinet in the back of my kitchen for eight years, and it was orange with rust. I did my best to clean it up, and I used it for the first time that night and cooked a steak in it. And I did a terrible job. I turned that steak into a piece of leather. I did everything wrong with it. I poked it. I prodded it. I moved it around. And, oh, yeah. I, and so, yeah, as far as steaks were concerned, <laughs> it's not one of my proudest moments. On the other hand, I had a lot of fun cooking that steak in cast iron. It was <clears throat> with what I was going through those days, pardon me. <clears throat> I'm still not completely recovered. With what I was doing, going through in those days, cooking that steak was an enormous stress relief to me. And it was a really, really, um, as I said, I really enjoyed myself cooking that steak like that. So much so that being the geek I am, I started doing a little bit of research on that cast iron pan that, did, that I'd had so much fun with. And I was hooked. And that was when I, I caught the uh, cooking bug and the cast iron bug at the same time. He was into heavy metal. <laughs> uh, I would rather not live in 1996 again. Oh, yeah, I remember 1996. 
That's the old Chinese model. The newer ones are made here in America and are $300. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the uh, new Lodge USA enamel. Yes. Um, the Lodge um, Chinese-made enamel still works just fine. I have one here in my kitchen myself, and I'm quite happy to use it. That is the biggest reason, in fact, why I didn't splurge and get a uh, USA enamel over Christmas. And so far, I don't regret it because, as I said, I've got a good collection already as it is, and I'm, um, and I'm very much enjoying it, including that large Dutch, that large Dutch oven. Those, uh, those incredibly expensive cast iron pans that everyone is selling these days, including Lodge's USA Enamel or Finex or Butter Pat uh, or that infamous $400 Yeti cast iron skillet, which is made by Butter Pat. Um, I have <clears throat> already justified it in the in simple manner that, you know, those $400 cast iron skillets, no, they, <clears throat> well, maybe they do work a very, very slightly better maybe than a typical lodge cast iron skillet. But the difference between those two is more like excellent for a lodge cast iron skillet to astounding or, or, yeah, or outstanding for, say, the uh, Yeti skillet or the field skillet or the stargazer skillet that I have. Um, the difference is very slight. It's not, probably for a lot of people, it's not enough to make that huge investment and get one of those pans. And I certainly get that. And I'm not blaming anyone for that. But for those who have made the investment, Maybe as a Christmas present or a wedding present or something very, very special. <clears throat> um, you certainly won't regret it either. So in that respect, you might even say it's worth the money. The other thing, of course, is that there, that's the same reasoning that we use as well when we do things like buy, say, a shun knife, chef's knife or a global or a uh, look or a uh, Henkel's uh, chef's knife, um, or, you know, or for that matter, have you seen the cost of those copperware pans uh, that they sell? I mean, those things actually put cast iron to shame as far as prices are concerned, meaning that they're incredibly expensive. And then there are those stainless steel cookware sets that are even more outrageous, the so-called waterless ones, or... <laughs> The ones that I've made fun of, like the hex clad uh, ones that are selling a set of uh, them for like $1,200 or so. So compared to all of that, you might say, you know, you get a better investment when you spend $200 on a Finex or $400 on a Yeti cast iron skillet. Not everybody agrees with that. You know, it's not the type of thing you're just going to come across with at Walmart and said, you know, instead of getting this large skillet for 20 bucks, I'm going to get this Yeti pan for $400. No, it's not like that. And it's, you know, it's definitely something special. And when you consider it as something special, I would say it's worth it. And that's what, I, and that's my opinion, I guess. Obviously, doesn't retain heat as well as a classic lodge. What size do you suggest to get a bigger one? What size? Okay, um, the field cooks great, about the same as my Griswold. Yeah, we own an Emerald Agassi, Emerald Agassi twelve inch. Well, that's a nice pan. I'm, I'm, and besides being really big, I'm betting that it's also thick and heavy, which is exactly what you could say about a lodge twelve inch skillet as well. And I would say get some use out of it as well. So a uh, hex on hex. Yes, we'll, I will agree with you on that, Marilyn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, okay, uh, if you want to get a bigger pan than the 12-inch, <laughs> I would still say go for it for the simple reason. This is one thing I've said many times too, but maybe I'm biased. So take my advice with a grain of salt. But I have found, just from doing all of this, that... Yes, you. everybody really should have at least one really big cast iron pan because you will get a lot more use out of it than you may think. I mean, again, I found good old Stumpy, which is, four, which is a number 14 and, it's 15, and he's 15 inches across. And Stumpy has been my go-to 
pan for uh, roast turkeys on holidays. I've made giant, you know, and he's also the world's greatest pizza pan. You can make him make a 14 inch pizza in that. Uh, and I have made those giant cookies in a good old stumpy. <clears throat> I've even taken him camping and, and he works great as a griddle over the fireplace. So yes, um, yeah, I think uh, bigger than 12 inch requires dual handles. Stumpy does have a lifting handle as well, so I would certainly agree there. And here it is, nine o'clock. I think I'd better clear out my mess because I made a mess and I haven't cleaned it up yet, which is what I should have been doing as I was talking. Sorry about that again, yet again, we flying all over the place. Meanwhile, I even have to move my cord for the camera. So let's uh, organize as best as I can, like this immersion blender, which I will move out of the way to someplace safe. Uh, get rid of these extra spices, put them in the cabinets, you know, clean up my mess as best as I can, because again, the in the words of uh, Ratatouille, or actually not Ratatouille, um, I, great, I forget her name, the girl in Ratatouille. Keep your workstation clean or I will kill you. So yes, I do try to keep her advice to mine. Heed her advice. Uh, this pepperoni and this mozzarella goes into the fridge along with this Romano. And the nice thing too is, you know, show this part to your kids. Show how easy it is to clean up your mess. <laughs> and finally, the can opener goes away. And with that, we now have room. So let's see if this is done. I think I'd better dig out my gloves for this though, <clears throat> because I probably should lift it with two hands. All right, there we go. That's pretty good. Okay. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, boy. Actually, I think this thing is solidified quite nicely. And the pepperoni has shrunk. You know, I do believe we have it. We have pepperoni pizza. And especially considering this is my first time making it, I think this looks pretty darn good. Let me see if I can try to move in, so to speak. Show this to you folks. I mean, you see the edges, for instance, where it's definitely dried out on the edges, which is fine, which means the underside is probably dry as well. As I said, the pepperoni has curled up. The uh, cheese is definitely melted. I'm, I'm actually liking the result of this. So I had better, once again, I had better get a money shot here, get a uh, picture or something, because this would make a great title photo for this video, that's for sure. All right, so let's do that right now. Yeah, this is pretty good. Okay, but... Looks good and scratchy. Yes, it does. I, as I said, the edges definitely look dried out. I am not denying that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to wait for this thing to cool off or something before I take it out of the pan. However, I don't think there would be a problem if, um, here, here it is. Got this uh, thing again. I don't think it would be a problem if I start at least going around the sides. And I don't want to block your view of this either. Because I would love to be able to get this thing whole out of the pan so that it looks like a pizza and not just a big mash of spaghetti. Not that a big mash of spaghetti would be that bad. It's a win-win situation. I mean, at worst, you get to eat a whole bunch of spaghetti. Still, that doesn't look too bad. Hmm. 
doesn't taste too bad either. I'll wait a couple more minutes yet, and then I'll see what I can do about actually getting this thing onto a tray. <laughs> Spaghetti pizza. Yes, indeed. Bilge. Bilge for sure. I'll definitely wait a couple. Yeah, I think I will do that. My plate is ready. Well, I'm glad yours is because mine isn't. Um, let me uh, dig out a tray. See if I can find one that would fit this thing. <sighs> maybe I should, yeah, maybe I should do this. Let's see how this would compare with a sheet tray. Uh, not good. Okay, not a sheet tray. Yeah, this is one thing I did not consider. Okay, then, excuse me one second, please, while I go under the counter here and dig out. Ugh, what do I have for trays down here? Oh, yeah, I forgot about this one. Ugh. My turkey board. And it looks like it might just fit, too. This thing here is actually split. I'm probably, it's probably on its last legs, but it should be good enough. All right. So definitely we will keep that in mind. Okay. But while we are waiting, it's horrible. What did we have on our minds? <laughs> Rick, wait your turn. Does anyone notice cast iron cooling off or pieces coming down? Um, not that I've seen, I have to say. I have not seen any sign yet that the market is cooling down. Granted, of course, remember as well, we are in, you know, in the period just after Christmas when everything, you know, when everything is still winding down from Christmas. I mean, Lodge has already released its heart pan for, uh, you know, the one that it is meant to, uh, have for uh, th for Valentine's Day, but a, a number of people have already gotten that pan too. That's one that actually looks like a heart with uh, Cupid's arrow in it. It's about a number five size pan for the record. Put some Gorilla Glue in that crack. Well, I could do that. Prices at Wally World have, if, if the prices at Wally World are going down, that's not a bad thing, I think, because, you know, inflation. I mean, I would rather see prices go down. Um, <clears throat> when I first got into this hobby, <laughs> uh, good grief, 13 years ago, you know, when I was all crazy and I wanted everything in the world in cast iron, at that time, a large 10-inch skillet at Wally World was less than $15. I think it was $13. And a, uh, no, actually I'm wrong. It was even less than that. And in fact, the large 12 inch skillet was only about maybe 15 or $16. This was back in 2010, 2011. But the prices have slowly crept over over the years to the point now where the large 12 inch skillet is, I believe over $20, maybe 25. Yeah, I think it's $25 now, maybe even 30. Whereas the large 10 inch skillet is $20. So if prices are going down, I'm considering that a good thing. Pandemic started this obsession. Food grade mineral oil on that wood. I could certainly do that too. Wally World, eight quart Dutch oven for a decent price. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm, I'd like to see what happens when I get this out too, Handsome Stone. I bought my first cast iron Dutch oven in 1990. It's a large number 12, eight quart. Well, that sounds not, that sounds good. And I'm betting you're still getting a lot of use out of it too. I got my Dutch oven in a thrift store for about one fifth new price. It was barely used. Well, congratulations, unknown nose. Sounds like you got a real score there. Um, my first Dutch oven was the large double Dutch oven and I bought it from Amazon. Uh, I don't remember. I think I paid thirty-five dollars for it, and I definitely got my money's worth out of it. I have no question about that. Back in the something, you can buy a big mix combo for six bucks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, no time like the present, I guess. 
Might as well give it a try and see whether or not I mean, whether or not this is a success. As I said, it's going to, I mean, we're going to be able to eat it regardless, but I really hope this thing retains its shape and stays like a pizza. But I guess all we can do is find out. Make sure I don't think I even need these gloves because I have this handle here. All right. My guess is I should probably try doing it quickly. So, oh, hey, there's a good sign for you. Well, let's see what happens, folks. Come on. And, ha-ha, hey, look at that. And here's the pan. I'd say it was, well, not flawless, but not too bad. So that means we can call this a success. Here is our spaghetti pizza. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. When I was growing up, a burger, fries, and drink was 97 cents. Yeah, I kind of remember that as well, Val's like cat rule. Um, Mc McDonald's used to have burgers for 50 cents. I got in trouble tonight. We found our 21st 20, 2024 cast iron purchase at John Wright Saucepan. Nice. Well, congratulations on that. I was into the mountain man thing, even bought a teepee. All right. So anyway, looks like we did it. I guess we managed to uh, get this thing. Uh, you know, we managed to get it out of the pan. Now, I guess the question is, how am I going to slice it? I'm wondering if a pizza cutter would work. You know, I don't see why not. After all, it is a pizza. Well, let's give it a try, shall we? And see what we get. If I can get one slice out, then, well, we're good. Come on. There we go. One. Two. Three and four. Oh, hey, look at that. It's already coming apart. I think, I, you know, again, I do believe we've done it. Which means the last thing to do now is get one onto a plate. And then after that, I think we're going to call it an evening because we've accomplished what we set out to do. Besides, we're getting on into that time already anyway. Okay, still, this is looking pretty good. You know, as you can see, it's still steaming hot. And come on, maybe I should cut it a little more. There we go. Haha. -ha. Success. It is sliced. This is our spaghetti pizza. Last thing is, I wonder if I can lift this, lift this at all. Maybe see what the bottom crust looks like. And come on, and it's just sliding around on the plate. Um, hmm, very dark. I might perhaps have uh, overcooked the bottom a tiny, tiny bit, but at least it stayed together because that means we've got it. So anyway, I know somebody at least said they'd never heard of this until tonight. Well, I'm hoping this. Uh, kind of encourages you to do this, especially if you have kids. I mean, as I said, kids would go nuts over this thing. It's not just a spaghetti. It's a spaghetti pizza. It wasn't hard to make. Uh, the prep work didn't take long. In fact, I extended the prep work by doing things like cooking bacon and putting it on the in, inside, as well as making the pasta sauce and other things. And the end result is something I would think that any kid these days would love. I'm loving it. So, yes, I do believe we have a success here. This is something I think I am going to have to make again, especially the next time I get to entertain kids. So, nice. Burn that bottom. My favorite is slightly burned. Well, okay, then there we go. 
Never heard this before tonight, William Hurd? Well, good. Um, I'm really glad to open your minds in that way. So many Italians are crying right now. Yes, I have no doubt they are, because like I said, here we go. We have definitely Americanized Italian food, that's for sure. I mean, not only have we ruined spaghetti, not only have we ruined Italian pizza, we have now ruined them both and made what is definitely an American thing, spaghetti pizza. And I'm proud of it. USA, USA, America. <laughs> So, yes, I am going to enjoy this. And, um, and besides, I have a friend as well who was already expecting me to bring her a plate, which I will gladly do because there's no way I'm going to eat all this. It's a, pound, it's a pound of spaghetti topped off with at least half a pound of mozzarella, not to mention all the bacon and uh, pepperoni, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Nothing is ruined. I agree. Even if it all fell apart, we could still eat it. So, yeah, this is definitely a win-win here. I, Carly, did spaghetti pizza years ago. Well, that's interesting. Maybe that's, what, maybe that's what popularized this. If so, well, hey, congratulations to her. And I'm glad, well, as I said, I'm glad to have found this. Because, yeah, this was fun to make. This was easy to make. It looks great, and I have no doubt it's going to taste great. So... I do believe we are getting to that time once again now. Banana peppers and I'm all set. Cauliflower crust had it, uh, had it not bad. Maybe mix in some ricotta. You know, you could do that. I mean, I, I would say, you know, just simply experiment and add what you think should go into this. I mean, as I said, I used, um, what did I use? I used mozzarella mixed into the uh, crust as well. You could substitute or even add ricotta. I would think that would work great. So that you end up with something of a lasagna pizza. <laughs> well, there's an idea for you. But nonetheless, this is yet another result of playing around in cast iron and trying something that I have not tried before. And I am quite proud of the results. Uh, this, things like this make, it, make me so glad that I learned how to cook. And also so glad that I learned how to, that I started this channel because, yeah, um, here I go again, as I'm saying here, I mean, you know, doing all this on this, uh, live video here with you folks, it definitely helps. It's a lot, makes this even more fun. I mean, the cooking is fun. The food is delicious, but as I said, the companionship with you folks here on these live videos, uh, that is something special as well. And I'm very glad that all you folks have been kind enough to show up here, whether on a Thursday night or a Wednesday night or anything like that. So try it before signing off, please. Okay. Uh, I guess you kind of forced me forced me into it. What can I say? <laughs> okay. Which means, I guess I've got to lower this camera a little bit. There we go. All right. Wait, it's a pizza. Shouldn't I eat it with my hands? Well, no, I don't think we'll be able to do that. However, it is definitely staying in pieces. There we go. Yes, yeah, see, there is a see, there is a little bit of burning on the bottom, but not much. And into the mouth it goes. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I like it. What can you say? It's a uh, it's spaghetti with pizza sauce mixed in. That's basically what it is. Hmm. And I'm definitely liking it. Yeah, I know your kids will like it too. Hmm. But yeah, experiment all you like. Add your own toppings, of course. Mix your own things like ricotta or anything, or a hot sauce or who knows what, into the spaghetti crust, and that'll be your result. Hmm. What would you do if you... If one of us sees you randomly, oh, oh man. I've been recognized once or twice. In both instances, I found it a little embarrassing, but I do my best to be polite. So, uh, but once again, though, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for taking your time to come here tonight. That's really what I can say more than anything else. Thank you for taking your time to visit my kitchen. And um, as I said, I'm so happy to, that this all turned out. 
And I'm glad that I was able to entertain you folks for another evening, which means we'll just have to do this all again next week. And I'm going to try my best. Uh, did I turn off the oven? Yes, I did. Uh, I'm going to try my best to actually have a cast iron Wednesday as I've been doing for the last three and a half years. Um, and it will actually take place then. So, well, what can I say again? Thank you, everybody, for showing up. William Hurt and Terry Sinchef and Kimberly Miller, G. Umphrey and Dave Evely or Evely, Val's Black Cats Rules, Brian Anderson. And, yeah, I well, I think you'll enjoy the video. There wasn't any real mishaps tonight, maybe a couple of little ones, but nothing major, fortunately. So thank you, everybody. And my voice should all be uh, completely recovered by next Wednesday, too. So thank you as well. And thank you for your time, Arnold Palmer. Glad to meet you and your family. Give this a try, and I hope you have fun. And so for all of you, again, have a good evening, folks. And see you next Wednesday. Thank <laughs> you.